I got it. Good morning, interwebs. Charlie again here. Uh, Friday morning. Beautiful day. So bright I could barely see my screen. And I uh, wanted to ramble a little bit again, like I usually do. Uh, got thinking, actually, about that same question I posted, uh, I posited last week. Um, got thinking a little bit, you know, I figured that one, one possible solution that I had to recap. Um, my sister uh, is, is in a game, is in a D&D game with me, 5th edition, and it's just her and one other player. Just two peeps. Uh, and they're playing a rogue and a druid. And that's it. And so I, I, I got thinking uh, I, would, I would try to posit a question for others to ask uh, possible solutions as to you know, how to challenge them without, without killing them, or at least not making it seem like I'm out to actually kill them. Uh, because there's only two of them, and D&D is typically balanced for four players. Uh, one solution I have had uh, qu quite some success so far with is toning down a little bit of the CRs uh, of, of the typical encounters, um, scaling it back, uh, you know, one or two or a half, um, and only giving them a CR a creature of a CR encounter of their level uh, during particularly difficult encounters. Um, such as, you, I started them at level 3, and I sent a white dragon wyrmling after them. Um, or more rather, I allowed them to encounter such a wyrmling. And they actually handled it with flying colors because they knew it would be a difficult encounter, and so they actually circumvented the battle using a very, very creative use of jewelry. Um, which ended up being really interesting. Really interesting indeed. Um, They've actually approached every encounter this way. I even sent a. They didn't actually know how challenging it would be. It was a, a sing, uh, It was a. It was a one quarter CR. It was a single, uh, drow elf, and uh, he had he had been playing dead, to fool them into coming close. Uh, but they saw through it, and uh, ended up ended up kind of brokering a deal because the drow knew he had been cornered. Which was interesting, they didn't know how tough he would be. And so they just kind of erred on the side of caution. They're like, uh-oh. Which is really cool because they're, they're being real clever about it. So, but one other thing I've, I've decided is that I probably should avoid um, uh, creatures with effects that might uh, dominate, their, dominate their minds kind of deal. That might um, shift you know, them from one side to another. Because in a larger group, you know, f four, five, six, seven people, um, one person changing over to the other side, uh, even temporarily, really isn't that big a deal. I mean, it is, don't get me wrong. Like, it's, it's big and dramatic and, you know, has immediate ramifications, immediate repercussions. And more often than not, this leads the rest of the party, there's usually somebody who can be like, oh, I want to dispel it. But in a party of just two people, that's a lot harder to do. Um, they're both capable of casting magic. There's the arcane trickster, and then there's then there's of course the druid. But it's a it's it's a gamble as to whether or not it'll actually work. So I figure I'd uh, shy away from things like that. Um, a really big saver suck uh, effects, which should, I should probably try to shy away from as best I can. Beyond that, however, um, that's probably about the only epiphany I really had. Um, you know, I think I had another thought, but I might have farted it out. Um, I'm not really sure. So I think for now, this will probably be the end of this one. Um, kind of proud. It's the longest one I've had so far. Which, neat. Even so, um, on this borderline chilly day, I shall once again sign off.